Welcome guys, this is the, the, the progress report from the IDM Nomius project, project from the Moxi team here. We have uh, André Kourou, Sharazar, Pedro Miguel, and also on the call we have Evan and, uh, and George. So do not not forget to add your uh, names to the attendees list and please share your progress, uh, uh, your report to, during the, the, the agenda. So I think we can start and going to through the list. Uh, first one is Sarazor and Andre. Right. So my weekly updates. Uh, by the way, uh, you're sharing sharing your screen because so that people can follow them throughout the the notes. It's better. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry is uh, there any note taker yet? Yeah. I think you are the note taker <laughs> because you because you speak. <laughs> you volunteered myself. All right. Um, so in terms of my updates, so I've I've implemented the IDM client. Um, so the IDM client is uh, a library, JavaScript library that uh, DAP developers will be using to integrate um, any any wallet using the IDM specification. Um, uh, there's a. I just seen, finished the first implementation of it. You, you can check the source code. I put a repo uh, link there. Um, associated with the client, I've also implemented the, the first IDM bridge, um, which is based on post message. So the way this works is that we we have the wallet, we have the client, and we have a bridge in between that allows for a client to discover wallets and also to exchange messages between the the client and the and the wallet side. Um, so this bridge is based on post message because everything works in within the browser in the first interaction of Normus and, and IDM projects. So that was implemented as well. You might check might check the source code there if you are curious. Um, I've also implemented the the first iteration of IDM signatures or signatures. Um, is the there's the the repo there. So basically now we can. Um, it creates signatures based on your DIT and the public key within your DIT. Uh, and others can verify if the signature is correct by um, checking if the key is within the DI document and the signature match, matches that public key. Um, if you want to know more about how the process actually works, there's a motivation section on that repo which explains the process of checking uh, signatures. Um, and also, I finished the the first iteration of the chat up uh, workshop that uh, that I will be giving in the IPFS camp um, in this month. This by the end of this month. Um, so, if you're curious as well, you can check the workshop and even follow the workshop. It's working. Uh, so, and actually, the demo that I will be giving will be a short version of of the the final result of the workshop, which is a mini shut up where we can uh, authenticate and of course uh, do the opposite, which is a logout or something like that. And also we can send messages and those messages are being signed and other peers are verifying those signatures, uh, checking if they are correct or invalid. Um, so in terms of my next steps, um, by the way, I'm not blocked in anything and currently I'm not in progress of anything. Uh, I've, I've finished everything in the last, from the last sprint. In the next sprint, I will uh, fill um, a deep dive on identity that I will be dr driving on, on IPFS camp. I will be filling a markdown with um, some description and a problem that needs to be solved. And, and, and I still need to choose the, the specific subject. There are a lot, of, a lot of open problems. I will choose the, the most appropriate one to get feedback and do a deep dive on that. Um, also, I will help out Gio um, in giving some love to Nomis.io. So Nomis.io is like a landing page explaining um, what, what is IDM and what is Nomis. And uh, that page is currently implemented, but it needs some love. It needs some improvements. So we'll be doing those improvements over the, the next week um, or this week. And I will be helping Gio with that. Also, I'll be implementing the Revoke app in Omnius. So revoking an app is actually implemented in the, in the IDM wallet package, but it's not, there isn't yet a, a user interface click 
to call that method on the wallet, uh, on the JavaScript package. Um, so I will implement that on Nomius, which is kind of, of nice because I will be able to uh, show the feature in the actual lecture. So I will actually like um, authenticate to the, to the demo shut up and the, the app itself will appear in my wallet saying that I now use that app. And once I click it, uh, I click the revoke app, my session will be destroyed on that app. So it's a cool feature that I will be uh, able to show on the, um, on the actual lecture. Um, and also in my next steps, I will uh, improve, further improve the workshops, the workshop. There's some minor stuff that I need to improve so that people can follow the, the workshop uh, more easily. And also there's some glitches that I need to, to fix as well. So I think those are my updates. Is there any questions? So I guess no questions for Andre. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I went down. <laughs> compact signature that you asked Jeremy about in the end, did you yeah. end up using it or are you planning on? Uh, sorry, I, I was cut down in the initial part, but I think I got, I got your question. So you're asking if the, the, the problem that I state or the help that I asked uh, was the final solution? Was that the question? Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, all right, so yes, um, the, the strategy that we are using for signatures is something, uh, is something really simple. So we have the device. Uh, so first we have an identity. An identity has multiple devices because you use your identity uh, wallet um, in, in your phone, in your laptop, in your, um, I don't know, any device that you, that you have. And those are device private keys and public keys, different for, for each one. And underneath each device, you have session keys. So a session key is associated always uh, to a device, just one. And the thing is that those session keys are, are, their, um, are child keys or children keys from that device key by using BIP, BIP32. Uh, so we use that to derive a key, which, which is nice because they are deterministic. And the thing is, if we revoke a device, all the session keys are all, also revoked because the signatures themselves always mention the device even if those are from the session, signatures from the session key. Because within the signature, we also have a key path, which is the derivation, key, uh, derivation path that we uh, use to de derive the session key from the device key. That's the whole strategy. And the thing is that all, uh, with this strategy, the signatures are compact because the session public keys don't need to be um, part of the signature itself. They can be derived from the, from the uh, from the device key, which is just a DID URL, which basically contains your deed and the pointer to the public key uh, that is within that DID document. But I will explain that uh, throughout the demo so that you, you get uh, more uh, insight of how it actually works. I have a que quick question as well. Um, Andre, would you yeah. mind describing the process by which you're planning on picking an open problem for the identity deep dive for FS camp? Like, uh, what are your criteria? Yeah. So Hopefully I wanted to ask because if if you wanted to run a few by George and me and see what like get our opinion on what we think is interesting or important, we'd be happy to pitch in. Yeah. Honestly, I haven't yet thought about uh, exactly which which item I will choose. There are a few open problems that I need to that we need to find a solution. Of course, um, the criteria will be uh, not something easy but not something too complex because we have like one hour and a half, I think, for the deep dive. Uh, so I will just first go through all the open problems and do a filter uh, just to get uh, a smaller list. And perhaps I will post that on, on, on the IRC. I don't know if you, are, if you are on the IRC uh, channel, which is IPFS-identity. And perhaps I will post the link there, uh, the, the list there, or maybe I, I can email uh, the list with you guys and you also provide your feedback to that. Yeah, or maybe you know, create an issue on GitHub, I don't know. Yeah, an email or a link somewhere would, would definitely be appreciated. I'm not, I have been saturated with PL channels and so I tend to avoid IRS. Yeah, all right. I will perhaps send an email with the list and, and get feedback on those. Uh, the thing is, uh, I need to fill that document 
like uh, I, I needed to finish that talk but like two days ago and Alan Alan is like uh, making a lot of pressure so uh, if I if I um, I will ask for the feedback to be fast so that I can uh, today uh, create the issue today and fill the, the document today, if possible. So this will happen like in two hours or something. Awesome. All right. And don't wait for us if like, you feel like you have to move ahead. <laughs> yeah, OK. So let's continue with a round of updates. The next one is actually, it's me. So I came back from vacations like two days ago, one week. And then from Monday until yesterday, I just solved the mini chat uh, app that Andrea was talking about using IDM for the authentication. Everything is designed and the specs for the end of were already prepared. You can see the link on, on GitHub is present on the agenda as well. And then for the Nomios IO landing page, uh, I have already um, to take a walkthrough and, and um, took the, the list of uh, items that we need to improve on the landing page. Uh, everything is already uh, described and prepared for Gilles once he, he can start to, to, do, to do so. And then um, next for me, for the, and actually this sprint will be way shorter. We have a, a holiday this week and then next week as well on next Monday. So uh, this week will be way shorter, today is less. And it, it, since it's starting just today, like it, we already lost uh, in a way like four days. So uh, I, I will uh, work on the rev revoke device user flow. It's something that we, we didn't prepare for the proof of concept, but will be the next, uh, next task for me. And yeah, that's, that's almost it. Any questions? No, okay. So next one is Pedro. Okay, hi everyone. So what I've concluded these two weeks, um, I've completed the backup identity flow. Um, you have all the, the PR links there if you want to, to check out. Um, I've also completed the model global component that is um, a component that allows you to, to open and close uh, um, a model, uh, even if you are not inside the model, in the context of that model. Um, I've also made some bug fixes. You have all the, the, the bug fixes that I did. Um, I will not read them all, but you can, you can check them. Um, I've also um, added the new icons to the, the style guide and also implemented the drop-down component that is actually being used on the, um, on the authentication screen and it will be used uh, later for me in the in the in the next task that i will talk about um, so i currently have in progress um, i am finishing the authenticate um, so the pr will be open soon uh, it's I, I i think i just need some some refactor to the code um, and it's almost done um, the next tasks for me are implement the si the sign prompt and also the split button. This split button will actually use the drop-down component that I, that I created before. Um, so these are my, my updates. Um, any question? Actually, I have a question. I don't know if it's a, a good a commitment to understand what's the purpose of the split button in the context, the context of the page where it will be used. OK. If you can describe a bit more on the Sure, question. sure. Uh, so this split button will be used in the in the home, uh, sorry in the identity page. Um, you you can this this button will have two actions or two main actions. One of them is to back up your identity if you haven't done yet, and the other one is revoke your identity. I guess am I right? Yeah. Okay. So these are the the, the two main the two main actions that uh, this button will be used for. Okay, so next one on the list is George. If you have any updates to share with us, <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm afraid I don't have any updates. I'm just curious to, yeah, to. I guess this is the last thing before the the, the IPFS camp, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I was looking forward to see what you guys uh, were doing. Okay, cool. So same same question for for Evan. <laughs> 
no updates. No. Just happened to still be jet lagged, and so managed okay. to wait for this time. Okay, so I can. I think we can proceed for the demos if you have. If we have anything, I guess uh, we have. So, uh, Pedro or Andre, once you're ready. Yeah, I can, I can show the book okay. the demos. I just need to stop sharing, right? So let me set up the demo real quick. I'll actually clean all my identity so that we can start from the scratch because I think Evan uh, didn't see anything about Nomis yet. So I will show you um, the full flow of setting up your Anomius uh, uh, wallet and, and create an identity as well. Um, and also the backup flow, because we can show the backup flow now. So I will share my screen. Let me share the screen. Tell me when, when you're able to see the screen. You see? Yeah. All right, there's a lot of stuff, like stuff from Zoom that is like cutting my view of the project. You can put it smaller. Okay. By the way, can, can you see the overlays that I'm kind of dragging? <laughs> no, I mean, we, it, it actually seems to show the tool tips when you press a button, but we don't actually see the overlay <laughs> when, when you're not there. All right. So uh, this is the first screen. Actually, I will refresh so that you can see that we have like an animation when the thing is booting. Uh, when it's booting, is like starting the APFS node, stuff like that. Uh, so the first thing that you need to do uh, whenever you enter Nomius for the first time is to set up your locker because um, most of the thing, things within the wallet are encrypted. So you, we need to encrypt that uh, with one or more lock types. For now, we are just uh, relying on a passphrase, which is one of the lock types. But later on, uh, we'll be adding um, uh, other lock types such as um, WebAuth N which allows us to use things from your device, such as Touch ID and something like um, in the mobile, for instance, Face ID and Touch ID and stuff like that. Um, but for now, as I said, we just have the passphrase, but the whole architecture is already prepared for that. So I'm gonna type uh, passphrase, and as you can see, we have like a cool library that shows you um, why your passphrase is, is weak. We are using a library that actually um, shows or estimates cracking times for passphrases. Um, so we are not kind of relying if it has symbol, symbols or stuff like that. We're actually trying to be smarter and a preventing, preventing weak passwords, even, even if they are uh, large, but they are like of like uh, just A's, for instance, like 10 A's, it will show it's weak because it's a, a repeatable pattern. Anyway, we're using a library for that from Dropbox. Uh, it's called uh, C, CXZ, I think. I'm not sure about that. So let's proceed. And the second, the second screen that I, that I have is the idle time for for the lock screen. So this time defines the the amount of time to the idle maximum time before actually closing the nomius again. Similar to your operating system lock screen. It's the same concept, basically. In this case, I will just use 10 minutes just for, for the sake of the, this demo. So this home page is, a, is like a placeholder. It's nothing final. We will be actually improving the, the placeholder page for the, the PFS camp to be, to be prettier. But for now, it's just this. And let's create my first identity. So we go through the, the process of creating identity. I can either create or import. But because I, I haven't, uh, I, I don't have an identity yet, I will create it first. Um, so the first screen allows you to choose your type of identity. You can choose a person, an organization, or other, because identities are not tied to persons. Uh, identity can be anything. It can be a person, organization, company, can be a foundation, can be even your cat can have an identity because your cat must be vaccinated. So um, it's, it's feasible to create an identity for a cat and say that, um, is vaccinated via a verifiable credential, for instance. Uh, in this case, of course, I'm a person, I think. So I'm going to choose person. I'm going to type my name. And I will leave the photo to be filled because the workshop uh, that, we, uh, that I will be demoing is not dealing very well yet with the avatars, but I will be fixing that before that has come. Um, next step is to set up your device. So you need to choose 
uh, the name of your device, uh, we automatically inferred that this is a laptop, but you can sh like um, specify a different device if you if you think the initial um, uh, thing that we inferred is not correct. Uh, in this case, of course, it's correct. It's a laptop, and I can choose a name because, as I said, your identity is associated with one or more devices, and this will be my first device. Okay, so let's proceed, and now. My net is being created, and I will try to explain what's happening here. So under the hood, if this goes well, yes, I will actually open the console. And tell me if if the things are too small for you to see. It's okay. All right. So we have this global called underscore underscore IDM underscore wallet underscore underscore, which just exposes the underlying wallet uh, module. Uh, in development mode. So uh, let's see what happens uh, happened under the hood. So if we pick over the identities, sorry, if we pick over the identities list, you will see that we have one identity here and we can check what's its DID, all right? So, sorry, it's the index zero, get the ID. So as, as you can see, my DID is based on IPID, which is based on IPFS. Basically, it uses IPNS and IPLD. And it has this identifier here, which is basically the hash pointing to your IPNS uh, records, which itself points to a CID po that points to a DID document. That's the thing. So I will try to resolve that, um, that IPNS record by resolving the DID. So for this, we have also a scope called DIDM, which stands for did manager. And we have the resolve function. I will call it with my DID. And I will actually await it because it's a promise. Oops. And as you can see, this is my DID document. And the most important bits of my DID document is the public keys. And I have two keys here. I have my master key, which is labeled, labeled IDM dash master, which is my master key. It's basically the key that controls IPNS record in the case of IPID. And I have a second key, which is my device key. If you check the label, uh, it's IDM device and the, the some identifier, which is basically a hash of the public key. Um, and also it's important to mention that this last key, my device key, is allowed for authentication, all right? There's also another, another fields on the document. Uh, there are parts of the spec, but the most important bits are the public key and the authentication, um, authentication array. So I will just mute my notifications because I'm being spammed with stuff. Anyway, uh, are you following uh, through? If, if not, please just stop me and I will uh, explain any question that might arise. Um, I think Evan has a, a question, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask a quick question. Um, it makes sense that for individual, you have, the master is tied to the identity, and then there's device uh, keys. And I was going to ask what it is for like a corporation or for other. Yeah. So in the case of organizations, um, you can, you have this feel like the controller. Um, this is like more advanced scenarios, but I can um, put a controller that is that mentions or refers to another DID. So let's say that I'm Moxie, as, uh, let's say that we have an identity Moxie. We can add a public key here, which is controlled by a person. Um, so this controller here will be pointing to the DID of a person, for instance, for instance, the CTO or the CEO or something like that. Um, and you, if, if, that, if, if that's not the case, for instance, let's say that Moxie contracts some agency uh, to, let's say, to manage the, um, the social accounts, for instance, and itself that agency also has employees, like this is a chain, a complex chain that can be uh, employed by using this strategy. It really depends on these cases, but I mean, for most scenarios, like simple scenarios, it will, the controller will be the same as the, 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 the ID. As it, is, as it is in this case. If you check the controller, it's the same as my DID. But the DID spec allows that. Did, did I answer your question, Evan? 
Are you? You're, you're, you're muted. Today. Um, so there's a controller which uh, gives identities to uh, devices. That controller in the individual case is the individual. And in the organization case, there is a like there is some there are some individuals that are that each have devices that can where in some individuals can like exert control over the controller. Yeah, like for instance, in this case, let's let's give an example, an actual example. Let's say that we uh, instead of of this controller being myself. I could be um, telling that uh, Souza also controls my identity, for instance, uh, and he itself could have three public keys, and all his uh, all his public keys will be able to also control my my identity. Um, but also there is this public key, which is um, which I must use to to sign the private the private key. Um, sorry, the private key will be used to sign is is the proof that I authorized him, basically. So this is like a chain of authorization that is possible with the DID schema. But, but as I said, we haven't explored uh, much of it yet because we are just trying to solve the simplest case for now. But the ID, the ID spec has actually some examples with that. So it's not something that the spec doesn't allow. It's just something that we haven't explored yet in our case. All right. Um, so let's keep with the demo. I'm going to unlock because we spent like 10, 10, 10 minutes. So uh, let's show the backup flow, which is uh, something that we just finished. I'm going to close the, the console. So of course, because uh, backing up your identity, let me explain that. So uh, we actually created my identity and the, the master key, which is the one that controls IPNS record is very important in the case of IPID. Because if you lose it or if it if it gets stolen, your identity gets basically compromised forever. This is a problem with the IPID spec itself. It's not a problem with other DID methods. For instance, other DID methods based on Ethereum actually point to a smart contract that is a con uh, contract that might have some logic. So even if you lose, um, you, uh, the, the owner loses the private key that controls that contract, that smart contract, um, that smart contract might have functionality to issue another um, owner based on, for instance, um, uh, social recovery mechanisms such as your friends and stuff like that. It really depends on the, the, the ID method. So in this case, the, my private key, my master private key stored uh, in this browser. So I will back it up and erase it from the browser, basically. So let's complete that flow. So you're faced with a paper key for now. This is something that um, uh, for the short term, medium term will work out. But later on, we'll be having other methods, more friendly methods. Anyway, uh, we haven't implemented yet the PDF part. But basically, it will like print, be able to download or print a PDF with the mnemonic and also um, a QR code for you to scan whenever you want to import your identity again, because you need you need your master key when you are importing your identity. But for now, we, you can use it, man, the, you can do the manual process. And the manual process is like copying the 12 words uh, manually to some, somewhere so that you can store it safely. Of course, as I said, it's not very friendly at the moment, but we will later improve that. So I will copy the, 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 the mnemonic. This is a 12 word mnemonic that will be able to restore the seed and with that seed, we will be able to restore the master uh, RSA key. This is something that we, we implemented because RSA keys um, are kind of complex to recover from a mnemonic, mnemonic sorry. But other type of keys uh, are easy, easy because it just requires some random bytes. But in case of RSA, it's different. You have uh, to compute primes and stuff like that. So we have, we have actually implemented a um, a strategy for our keys. Anyway, let me just have a quick question. Let me mute. Sorry. Okay, quick question on the interface. Uh, is it supposed that uh, the copy to clipboard should appear again with a timeout so I, I'm able to copy it again and try to avoid copying like uh, overing the text? I would say yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you take? Sorry. 
Can you take your notes? Yeah. yeah. I will take notes. All right. So I'm going to paste the, the mnemonic because I will need it because we, we have like a verification process so that uh, we are sure that the person really wrote the, the words. So I need to select eight and one. So one is body and eight is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So hopefully I know what counts. You, you, you will see the, the yeah, amazing. we have, uh, Pedro, can you also take note about the badges? They were not aligned well. Yeah, pa um, horizontal pa padding between the badges, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it. So at the moment, my master key was completely removed from my browser. Um, so even if a, a user, sorry, a, a robber manage, manages to, you know, get uh, access to my, my IDM wallet and, and even asks me to put the password, my master key won't be there, right? And to prove that, we have here uh, functionality on, on identity. So we want to access my identity. So we have the backup. And the backup get data should be undefined and is complete should be true. Yes. So before I complete the process, that this get data will be give me, giving me the mnemonic, the private key, and the, the seed, the seed, and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's it for the backup demo. And now the most interesting part is to provide authentication, of course, to, um, to apps. And in this case, I have here uh, an app. But before that, let me show you the profile page because I missed this for even for Evan. So this is the profile page, and as you can see, uh, it has like my name. It has here uh, edit profile button. You can see the devices currently associated with your identity, which is just one. Um, I can prove myself on social uh, networks, and and also I I will be able to later prove that I own a certain site. Um, for now, those are not implemented as of yet, but they will be soon. Uh, and also, I don't have any apps because I haven't yet authenticated with an, an app. I will just show you the edit profile so I can uh, fill some more details about myself, like my nationality, my gender, also my location. And as I said, I won't be pulling the, the avatar because uh, otherwise we won't be able to test the, the chat demo. Um, so as, in, as I feel that, that information is automatically uh, there. And even if I had more devices, everything will be automatically repl replicated using RBTB, right? So in terms of the actual demo, and this will be uh, used for, this will be used for the workshop uh, parts of the lecture in IPFS camp. So this is a really simple IDM chat, we call it IDM chat demo. Um, so I'll be opening here on Firefox as well. Um, let's see if it works. So I'm not sure if I'm on the correct uh, branch. Let's just, let me check that before. So I should be the right branch. No, I'm not in the right branch. I will need to check out with any branch. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. So let me just refresh. All right. So are you, are you ready? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> this will probably fail as always for the demos. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, I cannot type a message uh, before I log in. I need to log in first. So let's just do that. And what you see is uh, a prompt asking me uh, to authorize the chat demo app to receive my personal details and my social proofs. The social proofs uh, is not yet implemented, so uh, they, the app itself won't be receiving anything, just my personal details. Um, of course, in the future, we'll be able to edit this, um, how much you want to disclose to the yeah, it could app. Be granular, yeah. yeah. Yeah, these are like, similar to Facebook scopes or OAuth scopes, but we haven't implemented them yet. So at the moment, it's, it, it, it will receive the personal details. So if I, if I authorize, I'm logged in on the, on the chat, and I'll be able to, to type a message. 
And I will want you to take a closer look at the message itself that will appear here. You'll see like a, a loading and a check mark. The loading it means that the message itself is being, being verified, verified in terms of the signature. And if it appears a check mark, it means that the signature was correct. All right. So let's do that. No words. Let's see. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's broken. <laughs> Let me see what's happening. Oh, it appears. But it was like kind of slow. I think it was because of my internet. Did you you guys saw the Yeah, it has a spinner before, yeah. yeah. Maybe the internet is not really fast. Anyway, if I like you, you were seeing the loading. Uh, it should now be instant. Uh, the next message because there's some kind of cache on on the IPNS record fetching. So the next um, hello second. Uh, it should feel more fast because there's cache. Um, so let me try to kind of explain what is happening under the hood in terms of the signatures. I already tried to explain, but it's better to actually follow. Um, a repo here that we have, which is signatures. So we have a brief explanation of the signature itself. So the signature itself contains these fields. It contains the deed URL, uh, which again, it's the, the deed and um, a fragment pointing to the public key, which as, as, you, as you saw earlier, it's in this case, it's a device, IDM device key, all right? So, what I need to do to verify a signature is to fetch the DID document, check if that public key um, mentioned by that fragment, referenced by that fragment is there, and then I need to derive um, the real public key that it was used for signing via this key path. In this case, it will be just the, the device key in this example, but in Nomius, in the, sorry, in that IDM chat demo, I was actually signing with my session key. So, the key path will be something like this instead. Sorry, I will actually show you. It's better. Because I'm logging the messages. Can you see? So it's like M uh, slash and a unique identifier that maps to the public, sorry, the key path that allows me to derive uh, the, session uh, the session public key so that I can check if the value here on the signature matches the actual data that was signed. That's how, how it works. The, this uses BIP32 uh, to derive the keys. So this is something that many Bitcoins, Bitcoin wallets uh, use uh, to, to have deterministic um, um, Bitcoin uh, comps. Um, so that's basically how it works. Um, now we have another Easter egg, which is if I type something like hello IPFS, and because IPFS is within the, uh, the string uh, of the message, the text body, it will ask you, ask you to sign with your device key. And because the device key is encrypted within uh, the IDM wallet, it will, will ask you to authorize this signature, all right? So of course you'll see some uh, weird. Sorry, I mistyped the password. You'll see uh, a raw screen because we are still implementing this. We'll, this will be like the design will be very similar to the to the authentication prompt, but we will uh, with a different slightly different, different design. So I will accept this signature, and in this case the signature itself validated, but this this time it was signed with my device key. And let's check it out. In terms of the message, and here, here it is. So the did URL uh, is the same, but the key path is the root one, which is the device one, and the, the value uh, of the signature is there. So I think that's all for the demo, and the workshop will be like going through all the steps necessary to achieve uh, what you are seeing here, but from the scratch. Not of course in the by doing. Uh, everything like doing the pub sub and doing the the chat uh, uh, itself everything will be there already but just with mocks um but the process will be to have authentication i mean login and logout uh, login and logout integration and also the signatures and verification of signature integration 
that will be the demo. And I think that's it. Thank you, Andre. Any questions for Andre? No, looks great. Thanks. All right. So I guess we can we can finish. That's right. Okay. Thank you for stopping by, guys. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. See you next Bye. time. Bye. Yeah.